Hello again, I'm Henry T. Welcome to KZQ Channel 32. The name of the show is Be Inspired with Henry T. And I love being in this seat. What a blessing to be here to share these stories with you. And I'd like to let you know that your story is important as anybody else's. And don't just keep it there with you. If you think it's gonna help a lot of people for them to hear your story, call us with your story. And you can appear here with, with me in front of the entire state of New Mexico, part of Arizona, Texas, and Colorado, and share your story with all those people out there and watch them be inspired by you. That's what it's all about. This great big tool that's a blessing to everybody, KZQ TV, Channel 32. Great news to report, Holly Holm shocked the world with her stunning upset boxing victory, if you will, fighting victory over Ronda Rousey in Melbourne, Australia. Amazing, well-trained, and really, really made us all smile the other night in their sport, that combative, rugged sport of fighting. Wow, what a show. The New Mexico Lobos won a game they were not supposed to win at Boise, Idaho. And they had a miracle saving tackle at the end at the three yard line to prevent a touchdown. And now they definitely are bowl eligible. They're going to a bowl game. Congratulations to Bob Davey and all those Lobo players for what they have accomplished. Yeah, I'm fired up about all that. But in a minute, we're gonna get even more fired up than you already are. We're gonna meet a gentleman named Brian McLean. Write that down. Brian McLean's gonna be in studio with us and he's got an unbelievable story to share with all of us. Stay right there. We're coming right back on KZQ Channel 32. Funding for today's programming has been provided in part by A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I am the owner of A&D Heating and Air Conditioning. I am an avid listener of Channel 32, and this is our brand, A&D Signature Series. A&D also provides repairs, new installations, evaporative to refrigerated conversions, and other services. A&D Heating and Air Conditioning, 505-489-9342. Thanks for supporting family programming. Hello again, I'm Henry T. The show is about inspiration. In fact, if you look it up in writing on YouTube or in print, it's Be Inspired with Henry T. And as I've told you so many times before, I'm the one that gets most inspired because of guests like we have today. His name is Brian McLean, and he has been in the fire, ladies and gentlemen but he's got this philosophy. Don't dwell on the problem, dwell on the solution to the problem. And we're here today to hear his remarkable story. Brian McLean, what a pleasure Thank to you. meet you. Thank you, my pleasure. Wow, I don't know where to begin, but <laughs> it, it's awesome to see you. And I've heard a little bit of the story mm -hmm. and it's awesome to see you in one piece sitting <laughs> down looking so healthy yeah and i preface that now we're going to go back to where your story begins yeah. we have a lot of people that watch this show to be inspired uh -huh. to grab onto something that's going to change their life mm -hmm. and i pray today that you and your story will do exactly that lift them up and change lives with that well, preface, you. I don't mean to put a piano on your back, <laughs> but I don't think there's any load that you can't handle. Well, Where do we begin? Uh, it probably begin 
um, as a uh, um, a kid in the 70s, I would say, and uh, just doing what, what kids did back then. And uh, for me, that was experimenting with a bunch of drugs and, and uh, alcohol, those things. Uh, so it kind of got grabbed a hold of me. Um, it took me from my hometown in Connecticut and brought me to New Mexico. And let's just say I didn't, I didn't run to New Mexico. Let's just say that I kind of ran from Connecticut where I was in a lot of trouble. Uh, so uh, I ended up here. Uh, my brother was stationed in the Air Force here. So uh, when I got here, the drug thing just followed me, you know, and, and if anyone's watching, they, they had the similar experience that it doesn't matter where you go. It seems to find you uh, pretty easily. So I found that here as well. How, so, did, how bad did it get? How did it progress to how bad that it got? Yeah, it got to the point where I was a dealer for um, what turned out to be 22 years. Uh, I met my wife here. Um, she was a, a user as well. She was an IV user, and I was a speed freak pretty much. Uh, so we spent a lot of time using together. Um, and then um, she got pregnant. And through a series of events, I decided to uh, be a man and take my responsibility to be a father. Uh, so I did that. Um, but that didn't really stop my drug use uh, at all. So. Um, I was, I was blessed to see my daughter born normally <laughs> with all the chemicals that my wife and I had been pouring into our bodies to see my daughter with all her fingers and toes <laughs> just right. Uh, it was a blessing from the Lord. So all that to say, God has really had his hand on my life. As we look in the rearview mirror, you can see it so much better, uh, his fingerprint on your life. Um, so, uh, I, Moving ahead a bit, uh, the feds raided my house, um, and uh, I ended up doing some prison time out in, in uh, Lompoc in California. But I was on an ankle monitor, a house restriction, uh, for 15 months before uh, I had to self-surrender out of prison. So in that time, uh, I found Christ, or, or I, I should say uh, I was inspired um, by a little church called Sagebrush, which was Hoffman Town West at the time, meeting in a, a gymnasium of middle school. So uh, that's where I found Christ. So I really dug into the Word, and I kind of just switched addictions, Henry. I went from uh, a speed freak to a Jesus freak. <laughs> so when I finally did um, go and self-surrender, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in uh, California, uh, I knew Christ. So I wasn't intimidated, I wasn't scared, um, I was inspired. So while I was in there, uh, you'd be surprised what a, a little hope will do for an inmate who doesn't see any light at the end of the tunnel. Describe that hope. Um, well, here's the hope, is you don't have to live like that. And had I known there was a life like this uh, following Christ, I would probably have uh, taking that route rather than my route. <laughs> but I didn't know at the time. So uh, you offer hope and tell, tell guys that you don't have to live like this. You know, you don't, there's more to life, in other words. You don't have to uh, expect things to be the same when you get out uh, as they were before. There's a certain steps that you need to take. And the first one, obviously, is, is Jesus Christ. You need to accept him as your savior and, and you need to, uh, to have that supernatural touch on your life. When you go to your knees and you know you're at rock bottom, mm -hmm. first of all, how does that feel? And how do you begin climbing from rock bottom to self-respect again and see the light that was starting to shine on you? Uh, well, it honestly begins where you don't, uh, you don't have the control anymore or at least the perception of control. Uh, in my case, when I was in a prison cell for the first time and I didn't have all the drugs, as a drug dealer, I realized that I wasn't in control and somebody greater uh, or something greater was in control. Uh, so a surrender. And we used to say when we were locked up that it takes a big man to surrender. And that's, that's true. Uh, you need to give the keys to, to someone greater than you. And that's scary. But if someone only explains who Jesus is to you, it's really not scary. Right? He doesn't want to send you out into the midst of Africa, you know. Um, he just wants you to follow him. 
Your early connection with Jesus, your early connection with that feeling that you were going to be okay, mm -hmm. that you were changing. Can you take us through those experiences? Uh, yeah, I think it would start with Luke 15, uh, as the prodigal son. I think everyone relates to that. Um, I was 38 years old when I got uh, arrested and put in an ankle monitor, and then they put me in third-party custody with my father. Now, I did a lot of stupid things as a, as a kid. I lied. I did awful things uh, that um, no one in their correct state of mind would do to their parents, and I did them. And yet, my dad was the dad in the story. And when I first read Luke 15, I realized that was my story. <laughs> and I was the kid in the story, and my dad was the dad waiting for his kid to come home. So literally, when I got home, I expected something very different. But what I got was grace. What I got was, was exactly what Jesus was talking about in the parable. Uh, he welcomed me home. He didn't condemn me. He didn't point a finger at me. He didn't say, I told you so, nothing but love. Uh, so I knew there was something to this correlation between the Bible and real life. Tell me about Dad. Tell us about <laughs> Dad. My dad is a World War II hero. Uh, he's a role model, I would definitely say. Uh, I'd never seen in his life uh, any inkling of impropriety. Uh, the guy is just a man's man. He worked with his hands. He was a, um, a crew chief for um, aircraft in China, Burma, India theater in World War II. So to me, that man is an inspiration. Take us to a few steps farther as you start to rehabilitate to become quote almost normal again <laughs> you're now reading you're understanding your position in life mm -hmm. the solution to your problem is well implanted in your heart mm -hmm. in your mind now how do you begin to let that feeling explode not only in you but others around you i think uh, the first thing I would say is it is possible and there is hope. If you had told me 20 years ago that I was going to be a pastor, uh, I would have laughed you out of the room pretty much. I would have, uh, I used to beat up guys like me <laughs> that wanted to tell me about Jesus and all. Get that away from me. But the truth is, it starts there um, with uh, just humility and understanding that you're not in control and God's got a plan. Uh, so um, it started when I first saying, started saying yes to things that God asked me to do. Um, I said yes to, to uh, surrender my life to him, obviously. And that's, that's the big one. And that, that's the bottom line to everything. Because if I could have done my sobriety thing on my own, I would have done it. I wouldn't have lasted 22 years like that. I would have surrendered had I known. Uh, so uh, it's awe of his grace, because I know who I am, Henry. And I'm a despicable sinner on the inside. And I know, in my mind, I couldn't believe that I was used at all. And yet he, he chose to use someone like me. You know, you have such potential. Your greatest days are in front of you. I believe that. And you made a remarkable comeback. <laughs> Can you tell us about the comeback and some of those incredible things that you're presently doing? Well, uh, the comeback. Well, I would say the transformation because I was never gone to come back from. So it really, he, he just st slowly started to change me. And I told you a, a little while ago that I was, I was a, uh, a speed freak and now I'm a Jesus freak. And that's the truth. I just switched addictions. So when I, when I realized uh, that uh, there was this truth uh, that I could be a part of, it inspired me. And I hope it inspires others as well. I was the janitor at Sagebrush Community Church. After we moved out of the gymnasium, I was a, the janitor for seven years there. And I figured when I had guys working for me, the first thing I would say, if Jesus can wash feet, then you can wash toilets, right? And if it's good enough for the Savior, it's good, it's good enough for us. So seven years of that. And um, after that, they... They uh, was able to use my gifts 
uh, of music. I was a rock and roll singer back in the day, and, and uh, they gave me the opportunity to begin the worship ministry. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's my fuel and my passion uh, that I'm able to wow. still use today. Um, and, and so I started to think, wow, I can use these things that I thought were talents, which turned out to be gifts, uh, for the king. I had enough of this applause when I was doing rock and roll stuff. But when you, you do it for, a, for, for the king, you do it for your savior, there's no applause that comes anywhere near that. Uh, so I get to use that now uh, at a, a ministry called Living Free at the Sagebrush Community Church in Riverside uh, on Coors from um, 6.30 to 8 on Wednesday nights. So I would encourage everybody to give that a whirl. It's not your grandma's church, and it's not necessarily um, a recovery of drugs and alcohol alone. We have many, many issues that we cover there, support groups, um, anything from drugs and alcohol, yes, but anger and codependency and di- divorce care and, and on and on. And on Wednesday night, we have close to 20 different support groups that go on uh, at Sagebrush. Excuse me, how do people react to what you say, to your testimony, to your advice, to your solution? Well, in all candor, I can't believe that anyone would listen to me at all. <laughs> because, but I guess they do. I guess you reach a certain age and people kind of listen to you a little bit. Um, I can't believe that, I, honestly, I get to do what I get to do. Um, I think they react well because I'm straight up with them. I don't put any fluff in there. Um, and I don't believe that Jesus did either. And I'm kind of an up-in-your-face guy. I'll be the first to say, you're, you're messing up. You know, get back on track. Or I will also be the first to say, great job, keep going. And so now I've been given the, the privilege to uh, be a campus pastor at the Highland Campus for Sagebrush Community Church. And that's up in the Heights, in the Southeast Heights. And, and if you watch the news, that's where all the news happens, <laughs> right? Pretty much wow. within blocks of that. Amen. And, uh, and in truth, uh, 30 some odd years ago, I was actually dealing a bunch of dope, like right there in the parking lot of where, where I am now. Uh, so if you think God doesn't have a, a plan for you, I was destroying those neighborhoods and families I was destroying with drugs. And now 30 some odd years later, here I am restoring the neighborhood, or at least trying to, the very same people, the very same neighborhood. In the book of John, in, in Jesus' ministry, from the night at Canaan when he made the wine, to all the miracles in the street, making blind men see, <laughs> every miracle one after another, Miracles, Mm -hmm. walking miracles, seeing miracles. Are you a miracle? Oh, I think I am. I think you are, Henry. I think uh, if you have the right eyes and God gives you those eyes, once you've accepted his son, to see miracles all around us. Absolutely. Henry, I, I I shouldn't be sitting here. I should be dead right now. The way I was living, there was no question. Uh, If you let it carry out, I would have been shot. Uh, I would have... um, been killed in some way or I just would have OD'd flat out. So yeah, I would, my wife and I used to do drugs together and she would be in the throes of using IV and I would be smoking and doing all the drugs that I could and we'd have a moment of clarity and we'd look at one another and say, we're gonna die like this, aren't we? And the question was, the answer was, yeah. How much do you love your wife? (laughs) She's right there looking at you right now. 28 years she's put up with me. And if you know anything about a drug dealer, that lifestyle is um, not conducive to marriage. We'll just say that. So I did a million things that other women that would have left a guy like me. I was not a nice guy. I wasn't this guy. Um, so she stuck with me. Uh, and she paid the dues too. She ended up with hep C for uh, using dirty needles. Wow. And that, that happened long after we got clean. So what I would say is, just because you're clean doesn't mean that there's no consequences for what you did. You're a father. Uh-huh. I'm How a father. How about that experience? Unbelievable. I, I can't believe that uh, what my daughter is like right now. Uh, she also grew up, grew up in a uh, drug dealer's home. So for the first 12 years of her life, she was, and I, I hate to say it, but she was probably neglected. Um, because my first, foremost, everything was my responsibility to my addiction. 
uh, and my wife's too. But uh, she has risen above. She put herself through um, nursing school, and now at 28 years old, she is uh, an RN, and she can work at any of the hospitals anywhere around the Albuquerque area. In fact, she's looking at some positions uh, out of state. So that she's a miracle, Henry. <laughs> in our final minute, look at your audience out there. Mm -hmm. Many of them hurting. Many of them in a bad situation. Yeah. They need assistance right now. Where do they get it? How do they achieve what you have achieved? Well, first of all, uh, like we talked in a few minutes ago, it starts with surrender and being real. Uh, what you need to do is realize that you're in a situation that, that is not in your control any longer. Uh, God's got this if you let him. So uh, surrender, and that sounds like a big, a kind of an ethereal thing, but it, it comes first with uh, realizing your situation and um, getting the help that's available. So there's help available for you. Um, I would recommend that you come to the Living Free Ministry um, at Sagebrush on Wednesdays at 630 or come up to the Highland Campus on Sundays because uh, that's for a bunch of people just like us up in the Southeast Heights. Uh, that, that'll that help you. It's not a, a miracle. It's not a one, two, three, you're, everything's fixed. You've got some work to do, but you won't be doing it alone. That's the thing. Before we leave, mm -hmm. your favorite book in the Bible? Uh, Psalms. For certain, wow. yeah, because I relate with David as much as uh, as much as anyone else in the Bible. What a pleasure! My pleasure, sir, and a blessing to meet with you today. You too, my friend. My goodness, thank you. Thank you. Wow, I told you you would be inspired. What a story! Tune in for the replay of the story because you need to hear it again and see this man again. If you have an inspirational story out there that's yours, call me here at KZQ Channel 32, 884-8355, or my cell phone, 907-4523. Thanks for being with us today in this very special inspirational show, and we'll see you again tomorrow morning. Thank you. Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Marty Sice, a local State Farm Insurance agent. I am never getting married. Never. Guaranteed. You picked a beautiful ring. Thank you. <coughs> We're never having kids. Mm -mm. Ah! I love it here. We are never moving to the suburbs. We are never getting one of those. We're never having another kid. I'm pregnant. I'm never letting go. Marty Size, 345-3431. Thank you for supporting Family Programming. Wow. Incredible day of inspiration. And remember to tell your friends about this show. We're on every morning, 8 o'clock, on KZQ Channel 32. And to look back on some of the other shows, go to... KZQ32 YouTube and just see and let those stories fill you up with inspiration again. But again, this is where it's at. And I invite you to join us at church on Sunday morning, 9 o'clock and 1045 with Pastor Brenton Franks. Very effective, fired up pastor. And boy, he knows how to do it for our Lord in heaven no doubt about it. I invite you to join us on Sundays here at Evangel Christian Church. Thank you for joining me here on Be Inspired with Henry T. Again, one more time, KZQ Channel 32. We'll see you tomorrow morning. you got a story, don't forget to call me with it, 907-4523 or email Original Game Face at gmail.com. It's been great talking with you today right here on KZQ. Remember, we're on every morning right here. Be inspired with Henry T. 8 o'clock on KZQ Channel 32. 
Funding for today's programming has been brought to you in part by Malloy Dodge, Albuquerque's new and used Dodge and Ram truck dealer since 1955. I'm Nick Malloy from Malloy Dodge. For four generations, we've been serving thousands of New Mexicans from all across our fine state. Over 65 years of trust. Our family serving yours. Malloy Dodge, we're proud to stand behind our community. Thank you for supporting family programming.